It's Jets Weekly with your host, Connor Rabchak. Hello, everyone, and welcome into another edition of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. My name is Connor Rabchak. We've got a jam-packed episode for you today. The Winnipeg Jets played four games this past week, so I'm going to break them all down before handing out my hardest-working Jet and three stars of the week, and then previewing the upcoming schedule for the Winnipeg Jets. I'm going to break it all down. Let's start with the Winnipeg Jets' first and only loss of the season, Monday night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Through 12 games, the Winnipeg Jets are 11-1, and and this is the one loss. The Leafs fans that were in the building this night went home happy as the Jets lost 6-4. This game really got out of hand quickly. The Leafs went up 4-0 early in the second period, and the only reason the Jets were able to come back into this game was because of the power play. It went 2-4 down the stretch, and they scored with a delayed penalty situation, a 6-on-5. Kyle Connor, a standout performance in this one. Four point night, two goals, two assists. He continued his incredible start to the year, and I'm going to talk more about him later on. But the Jets' first and still only loss of the season, Monday night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Winnipeg Jets' first test bouncing back from a loss this year was a massive success as they went into Detroit on Wednesday evening and beat the Red Wings 6-2. And as you can see by the stats behind me here, this was a bit of a low event game. That's how Detroit has played their game so far this year. And the Jets, most of their games have been low event as well. But six goals, 29-21 to were the shots in Winnipeg's favor. The expected goals, 2.69 to 1.64 for Winnipeg. And the shot attempts dead even at 51. The power play coming through for the Jets again, one for two, and the penalty kill showing some cracks for the first time this season as the Red Wings went two for three on the power play, which kept them in the game for the majority of it until the third period when the Jets ran away with it with a dominant, dominant performance. This was a great game, obviously a homecoming game for both Connor Hellebuck and Kyle Connor, and Kyle Connor, once again, another really good game and a strong game at five on five for that top line. Coming into this game, they had been outscored nine to two at five on five throughout the season and they opened up the first period with three five on five goals a incredible incredible game for Kyle Connor Mark Shifley and Gabriel Velarde and Neil Pion continued his red hot start to the year as well adding two goals in this game as has been the case for the majority of this season the Jets took care of business against a team that didn't make the playoffs last season and isn't projected to make it this season the Jets played their style of game and came away with a huge victory one last note on this game a huge shout out to all the WS tiers who joined us Wednesday night at BP Polo Park for a Winnipeg Sports Talk watch party. We had the game on the big screen, we were enjoying some great BP food, and celebrating the collab of Boston Pizza and Little Brown Jug. It was a great time. Thank you so much everyone for coming, and a huge Jets win on that night, 6-2 over the Red Wings. The Jets then continued their winning ways on Friday night when they went into Columbus and beat the Blue Jackets 6-2, and this was a dominating game from start to finish, and the stats behind me tell that story. The shots 44-22 in the Jets' favor, doubling Columbus's shot totals. The expected goals 4.2 for Winnipeg to 1.4 for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's just a discrepancy that you don't see very often in today's NHL. And the shot attempts 72 to 45. That's another discrepancy you don't see very often. Dominating the shot attempts, the ozone possession, the expected goals, the shots, the goals, everything you could have asked for. The Jets had it in this game as they beat the Blue Jackets 6 to 2. Nikolai Ehlers was the standout performer in this one, recording a hat trick. Eric Comrie got his third start of the season and his third win of the season. And as the stats behind me here say, he didn't have to do too much in this game. The Jets played incredibly steady and structured in front of him, but still nice to see Eric Comrie get his third win of the season. And of course, Nikolai Ehlers with the hat trick. This wrapped up a stretch of five road games in their last six for the Jets as they returned home for their first game of a four game homestand against the Tampa Bay Lightning. This game on Sunday afternoon truly had it all, easily the game of the year from an entertainment perspective, in my opinion, as the Jets moved to 11-1-0, won their third straight game against the Tampa Bay Lightning 7-4 inside Canada Life Center. The expected goals in the Jets' favor, 3.4 to 2.5. The shots on goal, 30 to 34 in Tampa Bay's favor, and the shot attempts, 56 to 50 in Tampa Bay's favor as well. So a pretty even game. The power play for the Jets struck again. Alex Ayafalo with his first goal of the season. That second unit continues to get it done. And Tampa Bay scored a goal as well. Braden Point scored before leaving the game with a lower body injury, and he did not 
return. But when I say this game had it all, I truly believe it. Some massive hits in this game, some highlight real goals, a questionable goaltender interference call that put the Jets down one nothing early, then put them on the penalty kill where the Lightning scored their one power play goal of the game. So the Jets were down two nothing in the blink of an eye, but this team so far this season, they do not quit giving up the first goal, the first two goals. It doesn't matter. They're going to claw their way back into games. And that's exactly what they did. Mark Shifley with a highlight reel goal from Gabriel Velarde. Logan Stanley with a massive hit at center ice and then fighting. And because of that, he drew an instigator penalty, which put the Jets on the power play and put them up 4-3 at the time. A really, really great game from an entertainment perspective. And the Jets come away with their third straight victory, 7-4 over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now it's time for me to hand out my hardest working jet and my three stars of the week. But before we do that, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you've hit the like button down below, hit that subscribe button as well, and the notification bell so you don't miss this exact video every single Monday morning, Winnipeg Jets Weekly, breaking down the week that was, handing out some awards, and previewing the upcoming schedule for the Winnipeg Jets. Let's get into it, my hardest working jet of the week. The hardest working jet. My hardest working jet of the week, who I believe is a first time winner of the award in the two seasons that I've been doing it, Kyle Connor. Everyone is taking note of the back checks. He had a really strong back check in the game against Tampa Bay where Braden Hagel took a puck where Josh Morrissey's stick broke, went in on a breakaway, and Kyle Connor tracked him down, absolutely flying. When Kyle Connor's back checking, it's hard not to notice it because he is so fast. He's my hardest working jet of the week, and I'm going to talk about his point totals coming up here in the three stars of the week. But Kyle Connor, my hardest working jet of the week with some really noticeable back checks and strong defensive play through the first 12 games. And now, the Jets Weekly Three Stars of the Week. My third star of the week is Gabriel Velarde, who's starting to heat up after a slow start. He got the goal in the Detroit game. He got a goal in the Columbus game with a sweet setup from Kyle Connor. And he got a really nice assist on the Mark Shifley goal in the Tampa Bay game. On the season, he's up to four goals, six assists, and 10 points through the first 12 games. And he has yet to score a power play goal for how red hot the Jets power play has been. Him not having a goal is kind of surprising. That stat is going to change sooner rather than later. But Gabriel Velarde had a really strong week and is playing well after a slow start. He's my third star of the week. My second star of the week, the guy that's got a point in every single game so far this season, Kyle Connor. In all 12 games, he has at least one point. That is a franchise record that he just keeps extending every single game. Nine goals, 10 assists, and 19 points. He's a massive reason that the power play is playing so well. He's a massive reason why that top line really upped their play at five on five. And as I said, with the hardest working jet, he's had a lot of noticeable back checks and stronger defensive play this season to go along with the 19 points in 12 games. He's had such a strong week. And if it wasn't for the first star of the week making history, he would have been the first star. But Kyle Connor, my second star of the week. My first star of the week is Nikolai Ehlers. He had the hat trick against the Blue Jackets on Friday and followed that up with a two point night on Sunday against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And with that, he is now the all time leader in points for Danish born players all time with 474 points, passing Franz Nielsen in that Sunday game. An incredible feat for Nikolai Ehlers, who has always been. Denmark's best player on the national stage when he's been there and always one of the Jets top six best forwards as well. An incredible career so far. The highest scoring Danish born player of all time. Nikolai Ehlers 474 career points. An incredible accomplishment. He's my first star of the week. Now, let's quickly dive into the Winnipeg Jets' upcoming schedule. They've got three games remaining on this homestand. Starting with Tuesday night, they will be taking on the Utah Hockey Club for the first time ever, welcoming them into Canada Life Center. Then Thursday night, November 7th, the Colorado Avalanche are in town, the team that bounced the Jets from the playoffs last season. And then Saturday, November 9th, the Jets are taking on the Stars. This game got moved from 6 p.m. to 2 p.m. to accommodate the Winnipeg Blue Bombers taking on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the West Final at 5.30 down at Princess Auto Stadium. So we've got a super sports Saturday here in the city of Winnipeg. I am super pumped for November 9th. Then the Jets will hit the road and start the road trip with a game in New York against the Rangers. But the main event of the week, Jets versus Stars on November 9th, teeing up Bombers Riders that night. The West Final should be a great day in the city of Winnipeg.
That's going to do it for this edition of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss this exact video every single Monday morning. Enjoy the games this week. Enjoy the Bomber game. Saturday, 2 o'clock, Jets at Stars, Bombers Riders, 530. Should be a great week. Enjoy the games this week, everyone, and I will see you next Monday. We'll <laughs>